Continuing. Well, you know, about this mainstream media being the uh, cutting edge educators, they are, are definitely uh, uh, delinquent in, 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 uh, in, forming, in, in performing their duty to the public, okay? Uh, they're owned by very powerful, moneyed individuals, corporations, and the sponsors, okay? So these people are not unbiased, but yet they come across, they're trying to portray that they are. They're deceptive. That's why they're known to be the Decepticon media, because they deceive people. And they, that's how, because they won't tell you they have a slant or a bent or anything, but they really do. And these are being controlled. These They want to, remember, they... They, okay, again, it's this cabal, the New World Order cabal, globalist cabal. These people want to destroy nations. They want people permanently enslaved. They want to continue to lower the standard of living. And this is done through this wealth and income disparity. Okay, this is what's going on here. So let's be very clear of the methodology that they're using to get people to accept this. I mean, they promote high housing costs, right? That's one example right there, which is fascist. That's going against the best interests of the regular people, people at large, okay? And the people that need economic help the most, the blue-collar, working-class people, the poor, okay, that need a break. And that's the last thing in the world that they need is higher housing costs. But that's it. When they say, oh, the value of your house went up and this is such a wonderful thing and gentrification and everybody's making more money. All you homeowners, it's good for you, so just... Put blinders on. Don't care about those people who lost their butts, okay, through high housing costs, who can't afford to pay the rent anymore. And now there's not enough welfare out there, right? And they're talking, they're cutting welfare and all this. So now you understand this is this thing cannot have a particularly happy or happy ending in in the immediate sense, okay? Ultimately, it does. Ultimately, the good guy wins this thing. But you understand it's going to be traumatic. In the meantime, there's got to be some point where we say, oh, my God, you know, now that we've stopped the train, then all these liars out there, deceivers, start saying, stagflation, stag, we got to pump it up the economy. we got to grow the economy. But that's the whole thing behind bringing in the immigrants and the refugees. That's the logic behind that. Pump up the economy. They'll do it under the guise of compassion, okay, but I know their true motivation. And yes, putting labor class in their place, you bet. They love that. They love it. They want the poor to... Hey, what are you, haughty, cocky uh, American workers? We'll show you bringing in all these hungry, strong, young, hungry immigrants and refugees. We'll show you what's what. They'll do your job for half what you're charging. They'll work longer hours. So if anybody deserves to be on the welfare rolls, it's them. They get it. So there's no soup for you, you native citizen, native-born Americans. No, no, no. You get to die out in the cold. You notice how most primarily it's all white people that are homeless out there? You understand? Now there's more and more women, though, because it's getting too obvious that they're being biased. Now more and more women, they can't get pregnant because they know that's their ticket to get Section 8 housing. If they get pregnant, they'll get bumped up on the list, right? We all know how this thing works. So as they poison our food and stuff, less women can get pregnant. And for other reasons, they promoted the meth use and drugs and all this stuff. So you get these unsafe pregnancies that need to be terminated. You understand how these people work? You think I'm being paranoid or diab you know, too diab they're not that diabolical. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're hitting us on so many fronts. My head spins. I, I, I'm probably touching on one-tenth of, of how many ways they're hitting us. But this is just one example of how they lie to the public. And how they have this ulterior motive, what their agenda is, this New World Order cabal, the globalists, these fascists, what they want. Okay, and these are your human cause, weather change alarmists. It's all the same group. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of connected establishment special interest groups, okay, that have been, profited greatly off crony capitalism, about, profited greatly uh, with this wealth and income disparity because they've been on the receiving end. It has benefited them greatly. So they profit. They love crony capitalism. And they'd rather half the people of the earth die that they got to keep their wealth that they've gleaned through crony capitalism.
I'm under no illusions about how wicked the heart of man can be. It's written. It's a fact. So unless you make a deliberate attempt to not be wicked, guess what? Yeah, you too. Me too can be wicked. Myself too. So I've got no regard for the mainstream media by and large. The local news is good for reporting car accidents and stuff like that, but when it, it's all syndicated stuff they're pumping out from, you know, about national news and politics, geopolitics and economics and social affairs. It's all twisted and slanted the way they want to brainwash us, inculcate us, train us to think, to accept the movement of the Overton window, our impoverishment. It's a good thing, right? Because you're going to save the earth because you can't burn energy. You can't afford to drive a car anymore. You can't afford to cool and heat your home anymore. That's what they're after. And they are the good guys. Because they're going to save the earth. That's how these people roll. Deceptive. It's very satanic. Very satanic. What would you think if I told you that the reality you've been sold is actually an unreality? A lot of the people I'm talking to that bother to listen to me, they might believe that. An unreality, and that's, a, that's an actual word. You can look it up. Unreality. That's what we've been sold, and that's what we've bought. Hook, line, and sinker for the most part. It has to be like this because it is like that. You know, that's their logic. It, we've got to go with the flow because the flow is going and nobody's stopping it. It just keeps flowing. It keeps going. So, you know, it's you, idiot, you pipe dreaming uh, fanatic. I mean, you know, just get used to oppression. Get used to increasing tyranny. Get re used to exploding poverty and people dying out in the cold. Get used to more dubious war. Get used to more national debt. Get used to nice, strong crime numbers. Get used to it. Has it ever occurred to anyone else that the most important jobs take very little higher education? And are these the ones we want to subjugate and marginalize? Not me. Not me. Don't worry, if you miss the bandwagon, there's always another one coming, right? Isn't that the way it is? That reminds me of this term you hear in real estate school. You know, they tell people, well, just tell the buyers and the sellers out there, just tell them, look, it's always a good time to buy. It's always a good time to sell, right? When really, you know, when you talk about investing, there's something widely misunderstood, even by guys like Jerome Corsi, I think. I mean, you can talk about investment, you might as well talk about gambling because that's what investing is. It's a gamble, and people lose their butts all the time, and that's the way it is. There's really no recourse. A loan is something different. Just like I mentioned, you know, when a bank loans you money to buy a house and you borrow too much, and you're, you're, you, you're the one, as a borrower, you signed on the dotted line, you have to pay that back through a deficiency judgment. Yes. But um, I'm sorry, I kind of I kind of lost my train of thought there. But uh, understand how that works. But uh, yeah, you know, investing is gambling, and there's no assurance that you're going to get your money back on your investment or make any money at all. So that's the reality there. I mean, if we're going to go back retroactively, let's go back to the market correction of 08 that should have happened and have a reset of housing values, okay, because they're not valued. You, they cost that much. Are they worth that much? No, they're not worth that much. It's a scam. It's a scheme. And it destroys our economy, creates a chain reaction of cost of living inflation, which is taxes, chain reaction, debasement of your currency. This is how it works. It's, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. I understand what I'm saying here. I know what I'm talking about. I'm well studied in this arena. So if we're going to make anyone whole, why don't we make those poor borrowers, okay, make them whole? 
Okay, because to, in my mind, it's not enough that you just forgive them from this deficiency judgment that they might still owe because, uh, you know, you've been made whole. The government made you whole. You know, there was some little reset, and they popped a little bit of the bubble. Just enough. They let a little air out of the bubble, but now they're trying to reinflate it, right? This is, and people think that's good. Oh, housing prices are going up again. How's that good? I don't care if there's high-end property values. If you want to speculate, you invest and raise the price on those, flip and all this stuff and rent out the high-end stuff. But leave, leave alone the stuff that's coveted by, you know, young couples struggling, okay, that really could use a break. Okay, that's all I'm saying is that people just need places to live that are affordable. Okay, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be very humble. But people need a place to live. They have a God-given right. And you say, well, it's not the government's not responsible. But the government allowed all this. They legitimized this theft. They legitimized this debt. The theft of the wealth of our nation. The impoverishment of, of the public. And just because you benefited from it, and you're going to stick to your guns, you're going to stand before God someday and, and justify that, and rationalize that to God, who's not going to buy the psycho babble rattling around in your head, uh, I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't risk it. Better safe than sorry. There's another uh, a good, good, uh, good place to use that philosophy. Okay, better safe than sorry. When it comes to answering to God someday, who owns you rightfully, your your body and your soul. Don't want to be evil, man. And that's evil. This system is evil, man. And Satan is still very, very much in control. And Trump's trying to change that. And God help him. God help him. I mean, that whatever fiber of my being. But sooner or later, one way or another, the job's going to get done. And it could get ugly. I don't know. It just depends on where we are in history, in Bible prophecy. One way or another, it's going to get done, though. So you can fight, kick, and scream, but not all the combined collective forces of darkness are going to stop what God has resolved to complete. Okay? And it's all coming. It's all coming. So all you evildoers have two choices, repent or perish. Why, like so many others, would have no regard for God? I would have no regard for God. Why, like so many others, I would have no regard for God if I didn't know the Bible, especially regarding the fall of man and the ensuing curse. I already talked about that earlier. Yeah, I could see where somebody would say, you know what, you're an idiot. You say God is competent. You say God loves me. He's all-powerful. Then why this punishing heat? A loving God wouldn't make me experience this. Why this bitter cold? Why disease? Why death? If there's this loving God. It's all explained in your Bible. The ensuing curse that we brought upon the whole earth. The satanic curse. When God wished he didn't even create us, but he didn't give up on us. In his infinite mercy, he put a plan into action, and that plan is still going on to this day. It's not completely fulfilled. But it largely was fulfilled when Jesus was willing to pay the price on the cross for our sins. That's when the battle was won. And if you reject Jesus Christ... When you know what he offers you, don't expect anything else coming down the line. It's not. It doesn't get any better than that, folks. That's the love of God, and it doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any more sure than that. It will not be proven any more than that. There's no more ransom to be paid. He's the final propitiation for our sin. So accept Jesus Christ into your life. That's probably the best advice I could ever give anybody. Certainly don't be ashamed of him. Let all men be called liars, but God can't lie. All I can say is that there'd, be, there'd better be a God because we're all going to require his great love, power, and mercy, mercy and forgiveness. It is written, the peacemakers should be called sons of God by Jesus Christ. The only viable alternative 
is what? I mean, if you're if you're a peacemaker, you just feel called that you just want to be making peace on the earth. You don't care about being great in the kingdom of heaven. You're just living in the now, doing what you're called on to do. It's teaching. It's preaching. It's being a leader. So you're being a peacemaker by when you are enlightened. That's what you do naturally. But the alternative is what? Not doing it because we don't want to be or we're unwilling to be called sons and daughters of God. Because the son of God is a daughter of God. I mean, we're all one. We're mankind. Mankind is womankind. So because you're unwilling to... Uh, is that a good reason to not go out there and be a peacemaker as best as you can? <laughs> 